Good morning, everyone. Welcome back once again to Divine Grace Christian Fellowship. We're so excited again. This weekend is part four series of What We Have is Too Precious to Lose. Please stay tuned as we welcome Pastor Robert Lee Proctor. Amen. 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 I tell you what. Yes, what we have is too precious to lose. Amen. Precious truth. Amen. Amen. Part four. Uh, all this month, uh, yeah, all the last month, we we've been been going into various aspects of what uh, Peter had pointed out are some precious things that that we've been given: precious faith and, and precious promises, along with the precious precious knowledge of Christ. And today is going to be the last part of this four-part series dealing with what we have is too precious to lose. And this particular installment will be precious truth. Amen? Amen. And then before I get started into that, I want to uh, start off with my pastoral notes, some things that have been on my heart all this week, and I'm sure it's been on yours as well. Um, first off, I want us to pray for our service members. Yes. Uh, this recent... Uh, incident up in, in Fort Hood uh, it gives us a, a pause in, in, in the, the, the plight of our troops. Being a retired military person uh, as I am, I, I understand that when you're in garrison, you're supposed to be in a safe harbor. You're supposed to, you know, everything is, is, is peacetime, even though there's a war going on around you in other, other places. But when you come back to garrison, you're, you're, you're supposed to kind of lift your hair down a little bit, and relax, and, and get your equipment refit it and, and, and get get, get your, yourself back in order before you go back out to the battlefield. But as it turns out now, the enemy is attacking us in our safe harbor. The enemy is attacking our minds, the people's minds that, that are coming back from uh, these war zones and they, they have all this stress and strain upon them. And it only takes just one little incident to cause such what occurred there at Fort Hood. So we need to pray for our troops. Those that are here stateside preparing to, to go out and do their duty, and those that are overseas uh, fulfilling their, their, their call and, and hope to come home in, into a safe harbor. Amen? So pray for our troops throughout uh, the, the upcoming days. And also, this month uh, is uh, child, child Abuse Awareness Month. And so we need to pray for the children around the world. Yeah. And not, not only the, the physical abuse that a child may go through, but there's mental abuse that a child goes through. There's spiritual abuse that a child may go through. And if you're aware of it, if you know of it, and, and you don't feel comfortable confronting that person or that situation, go to somebody that, that is that purpose uh, in, in, in their uh, uh, particular organization or in their particular heart to do something about that. But let people know what you know if you're aware of it. And at the same token, pray for the, the, the children. There's a lot of things that are going on in, in our everyday life as an adult. And sometimes we get sidetracked. We get, get off of what the, the original purpose of us uh, doing uh, things. And, and we forget about the children because we put up so much focus on ourselves. So, uh, And the child that I'm speaking of can be of any age. Come on now, somebody. The, 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 the child can be be 50 years old, can be 60 years old, because they are a child, they're a child of God. And so, in essence, I'm, I'm asking you to be aware of any abuse that you see of anyone. And if you have the, the ability to stop it, stop it. If not, you have the ability to contact someone that can do just that. Amen? Amen. And the third and final uh, point I want to want to bring up is today, or this month, is Happy Happy Month. We're celebrating all the April babies this month. Everybody that's an April baby, my, my, my wife, she just stepped out of the sanctuary, but she's an April baby, and I have a granddaughter that's an April baby this, this month, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll be celebrating their, their April uh, birthday, and, and uh, also anyone that's, that, that, that got married or engaged or got a job or whatever the case may be, let's be happy in the month of April. Let's, let's, let's bring in all the, the showers in April for the May flowers that's going to come up, amen? So, so those are the three things that the, the pastor had on his heart uh, this month for, for, for this, this, this particular uh, day. And 
I, I want to place it on your heart as you go throughout the week, thinking about those that you should pray for. Pray for the, the troops. Pray for the children. And if you know of anybody that has a birthday celebration, be nice to them. Because when your time comes up, you're going to want somebody to be nice to you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Well, i got a word for you today. I've got a word today that I believe is going to answer a lot of questions. I, as a matter of fact, I know it is. Because when I got into this word and I started really digging deeper into the understanding of this precious truth that we have, it revealed a lot of lies inside of me, a lot of lies that I've taken a hold of that now I was able to, to, to rid myself of those things, and now I have the precious truth that I now, the present truth that I now stand in. And so I believe that when you hear what God has to say to you through this particular sermon, you too will stand in a whole new and present truth about, about your relationship with, with God, your, with your relationship with, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your relationship with, with other believers in the body of Christ. Amen? So I'm excited about what was getting ready to go forth. So I don't want to delay it any longer. Let me just go ahead and open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord God. This is the day that you have made, and, and we will be glad and we will rejoice in it, Lord. As I go forth today, Lord God, I thank you that You've taken the, 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 the thoughts of my, my heart and the words of my mouth, and you've made, put them in line with your thoughts and your words, Heavenly Father, so that as it goes forth, it goes forth with clarity and with understanding, and it helps those who are here to hear your word and, and, and receive some answers that will help them move forward in, in what you would have them to do now that they have an understanding of the truth. In Jesus' holy name, we praise and we glorify him. Amen. 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 While you're standing, go ahead and open up your Bibles to to uh, Second Peter, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the foundation of Scripture that, that's there in the Second Peter chapter one, verse twelve. Second Peter chapter one, verse twelve, and it says there, wherefore, wherefore I will not be neglect to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Amen? Amen. 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 You may have your seat. Amen? Therefore, wherefore, I will not be neglect to put you always in remembrance of these things, because you know them. And you've been established by them. <laughs> they, they placed you in what you now have to be your pres uh, present truth. Amen? I was reading an article the other day and came across this, uh, this, this particular article that I was reading the other day. And it, it, it was about a survey that was taken back in the early 1990s. And the interviewees were asked a certain question. They said, do you strongly agree or somewhat agree or somewhat disagree or strongly disagree with the following statement? I'm going to get ready to make the statement to you that you make your choices. Strongly agree, somewhat agree. Some will disagree or strongly disagree. And the question that was brought up, uh, the author said, is that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Different people can divine, define truth in conflicting ways and still be correct. That was the question. That was the question that was brought up to this group of people. And, and it said there again, it said, the question that you have to answer whether you agree or disagree is that, there is no such thing as absolute truth. Different people can define truth in conflicting ways and still be correct. Now the writer said in, in, in this article that, that caught my, my interest, it says only 28% of the respondents express strong belief in absolute truth. Out of 100 people, only 28 said that, yeah, there is absolute truth. Now, more surprisingly, he said, only 23% of born-again Christians and evangelical Christians accepted that idea. Of all the people they, they talked to, and they didn't give a, a number, they said 23% of them said that, there's, yeah, there's, there's absolute truth. But you got to look at the other side, the mm -hmm. flip side. There was over 75% of them that said that there's no such thing as absolute truth. He, he said it this way, he said that more than 75% of Christian interviewees believe that nothing is really certain, even whether there is a Jesus or not, whether what he, he is what he claimed to be 
or not. They, they said that they don't even know if his word is true or not. There's, there's no absolute truth of that. And surprisingly so, these Christians say that they're not even sure of the truth as it pertains to eternal life. They're not really sure what's going to happen after they die. And so they've been living this life of this conflicting truth. It's not really absolute, but it's absolute in its conflict, but not absolute in its truth. Now, I'm not deriding this, this, this article because the way the author wrote it, you know, he put his bias in that, and I, I don't know the guy or the person that wrote it, so they could have fashioned it any way that they wanted to fashion it. So I said, well, let me go to the truth. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian believer, so I, I need to, 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 to understand of the, the, the probability of this truth that they just read as it pertains to the scripture. So I went into 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. And that's what Paul said. He was, he was talking about, about you know, certain things that, that were in our past. And you know, be careful about what you talk about people's past, because over in 6 11 he says, and such were some of you. And that caused me to pause. I'm like, well, Robert, I remember before I accepted the truth of Christ, well, I wasn't sure of the truth. As a matter of fact, I, I took on some philosophies of, of, of certain notables, such as, as uh, Richard Pryor, where he said, you know, tell me some more lies so I can forget about the truth. You, you know, there were some things about the truth that I didn't want to face up to. And, and so once I realized that these things that I was really believing and, and all these different truths that I, I found myself following was actually taking me further away from where I wanted to be at, I had to take a, take a stop. And I said, wait a minute. I need to know the truth. I need to know the truth. And so Paul says, well, such were some of you, but you are washed in the blood of Jesus. He said that you are sanctified and dedicated to God through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He, he, was, he was outlined, okay, this is the truth of the matter. He, he went on to say that you are justified, pronounced righteous on your belief in Christ by the name of Jesus and by our God. That's the truth. And once I, once, I, once I got a hold of that truth, then I was able to unravel a lot of lies. And I believe that that's what this author was setting out to, to proclaim, that there are some who have, have kind of had the truth, but they allow certain other truths to come in and knock them off the truth. And so this, this letter that Paul is writing is not so much for the unbeliever. Because the unbeliever, they, they already got it. They, they, they already know there's no Jesus. They, they already know that there is no eternal life. They already know in their mind, they, they, they're believing that lies that, that being the case. But it's that believer that's listening to false teachers who, who Paul is writing, or rather Peter is writing to here, They say, wait a minute, there's some things I want you to pay attention to. And so I, I, I wanted to make sure that, that I was able to, there again, you know, give you all the things that, 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 that is understandable. So I said, well, let me give you first off the truth. The de definition of truth. Now, objectively speaking, by, by the definition, truth is what's being taught by Christian religion respecting God and the execution of his purpose through Christ and respecting the duty of man. That's the truth, what's, what, what we've been taught out of this word. And that's where the truth comes from, objectively speaking. <laughs> and, and then also, this, this truth that we're learning out of the word of God is what helps us oppose the superstitions of Gentiles. Of those other truths that are out there. When we, when we look at the word and we look at those other truths, we're like, no, nah, that's a lie. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. And so these teachings that, that gives us those things and it, and, it, and it puts down those corrupt opinions and precepts of false teachers that may come up and, and even those among Christians to try to get you off the truth when you get good teaching, objective teaching out of the word. Mm -hmm. And then there's a subjective thought of truth and that, that it is the candor of mind that's free from affection, meaning that you're, you're, you don't take certain things out of the Bible and say, okay, this is the only truth I'm going to hold on to. You take the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And, and also, it, it, it takes away the falsehood and the deceit. So as I'm thinking about the truth, then I'm thinking about what's true. When I'm doing the truth, I'm doing what I've been taught about the truth. And so when both of those are together, I'm living the truth. And that's the truth. Amen? Amen. And that's the truth. And so, so we need to, 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 to do something with that truth. We need truth. We need truth. As, as a believer, we need truth. And so uh, 
in, 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 in 2 Peter 1, 12, it says there, Wherefore, I will not be neglect to put you always in remembrance of these things, through, though you know them and are established in the present truth. Peter said, I, I, I got to remind you of this. I know you already got it. I know you, you, you've been, been following the truth all these years, but I just need to bring this up to your, to your memory. I need to bring this back, back in, in front of me. So he said, first off, wherefore, I will not be neglect. Peter was saying, I, I won't care less. There's some people that will care less about the truth. So they'll give you whatever truth is true. They didn't think it's true. But Peter's like, no, I need to give you the absolute truth. I need to make sure that you have the truth. And as a pastor, it's my job to present to you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. That as a pastor, I, I, that's what, I, what I'm called to do, is give you the whole truth. Even as I'm studying the truth and it comes up against what I thought was the truth, I got to remove that, get that out of my system, and then, and then latch hold of the real truth so that I can make sure that you get the real truth and so that you can live, live a life of truth. Because in, in, the, in the Bible, Jesus, over there in Genesis, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 3.15, is the said of God that he will give us pastors after his own heart, the God of truth. He will give us pastors after his own heart who will feed us with knowledge and understanding of the truth. I think that's why over there in John 21, when, when, when Jesus was sitting down with Peter, and, and he, he told Peter three times, feed my, my sheep, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. And I, I, I kind of took it as him saying, look, feed them the truth. Don't, don't feed them the, the chain. Feed them the good part. Feed them the truth. They need to know the truth. Feed them the truth. And so I will always have to remind you of these things, bring, bring those, those things up about the truth. Because I know, there again, it's, it's already established in you. You already have that precious uh, faith. You already have faith in Christ. That's why you accepted him uh, you know, as your Lord and Savior. Peter said over in, uh, early in, in uh, chapter 1, he says, We have obtained like faith as him through the righteousness of God and our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to the divine power that pertains to life and godliness. Without that precious faith, you wouldn't be unable to, to live up to that life and up to that godliness. You also have precious promise. You ought to have understanding of the truth in that because we've been given an exceedingly great and precious promise. And as a promise seed, we, we've got these promises that we can be partakers of, it, which is of the divine nature. So with, with that, we can operate under this, this truth. And finally, because we... Because I know that you hold on to this knowledge. You don't let this knowledge slip out of your hand very easily. You, you're not, you're not, not, not double-minded in this. I, I know this about you. And, and so I know that the, the knowledge that you have connected with the faith that you have makes you neither barren nor unfruitful. Because when you, when you connect that, uh, that virtue to your faith and when you connect temperance to your faith, when you connect you know, all those other uh, in, in enhancing qualities to your faith, it makes you abound. It makes you want to go out there and do something. It makes you want to be productive and, and, and not, not barren. You want, you, you want to be fruitful. You want to, want to bring out some things out of in, in your life. You want to see some results of your, your, your faith in your life. And so, so I know you have those things in you. I, I know that you have those things in you. That's why I need to remind you of the present truth that you stand in. So this sermon basically will address three biblical truths as a result of this present truth that we hold concerning our relationship with Jesus. That, 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 that Paul, or rather that Peter, outlined in, 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 this, in this chapter. I, I kind of like to look at Peter as apostle of faith. Because when you look at, at Peter's life, you know, he, he lived up to the, the ethos of faith. He walked on water. He, he was the one that, that once he got it right, he was able to, to speak to 3,000 in one day and all of them got, got, got saved on that one day. A man that used to do a whole lot of cussing and fussing and fighting, living by that lie, the lie of the sword. And once he understood what the real sword was, which was the sword of the spirit, which was the word of God, he began to operate off of that and people's lives started getting changed. That's the truth. He, he, was a, he was the one that, that after a while his clothes were so anointed that he can go out and, and, and lay his t-shirt on somebody and they'll get saved, they'll get healed. You know, he, he had the truth of, of, of that healing inside of him of, of Christ. So, so that's a, those are the three biblical truths that I kind of want to talk to you about that, that Peter wanted to talk to those 
Christian back in the day about it. Uh, basically, he wanted them to understand that their spiritual knowledge is a result of their abundant faith. And knowledge they have is from their abundant faith. He wanted to let them know that they're able to maintain their spiritual equilibrium as a result of their confirmation of their call and their election. Hey, you can you can keep you can stay balanced because you know that you have this righteous call in your life. You know you've been selected by God for a righteous for that righteous call. And lastly, we're going to talk about this this spiritual access that we have. The spiritual access that we have do I call the ministry of divine entrance. So first off, let's, let's talk about this, this spiritual knowledge as a result of our abundant faith. Over in, 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 in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, it, it, it talks about certain qualities that are, are added to your faith, that if they're ever increasing with you, in you, you'll have a clear awareness of the, and faith in Jesus Christ. That, that once you get these things in you, that there's awareness that comes about, and, and, and there's a, a, a desire to know more about Christ. And when that happens, you end up operating in this, what I, what, what I believe is your hundredfold level of faith. Mm -hmm. you, you can operate in the fullness of it. Because what, what Jesus talked about over in Matthew, when he was talking about the, the seed and, and the sore, and that one particular seed that went into the heart, went deep in the heart, and, it, and, and, it, and, and the person really began to, to, to meditate on it and gain understanding of it, then it started, started producing 30, 60, and 100 fold. But or in, in, in verses 8 and 9, Peter says that if you don't have these qualities, if you don't have the virtue, if you don't have the temperance, if you don't have these qualities added to your faith, then the result is a, a faith that is corrupted and contaminated mm -hmm. if you don't have these things. And they will not allow you to see the things of God clear enough so that you'll stay out of your former sin. Mm -hmm. So that's why when, when I read this, this particular chapter or this, this particular uh, letter, I realize that it's to the believer and not the unbeliever. Because of that, that statement right there, form of sin. See, an unbeliever is in their present sin. But if you are a believer, they're form of sin. They, they, they're, they're form of, they're no longer part of you. But if they're a part of you, then you're not really living up to who you're called to be. Because that will be your present sin, even though you call yourself a saint. Amen? And so, and so he was saying that, that if you don't have certain qualities in you, you're easily able to fall back into those form of sin, whatever they may be. Amen? It, it says it this way over in, in the New Living Translation of, of those verses. Verse 8, it says, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted, Get that they're so nearsighted that he's blind mm -hmm. and having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sin. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I were, these are readers, but I got contact lenses in. And so if I take my contacts out, I'm blind. I, I can't see nothing. And, I, and, and I, I can know what everything else is in the room. When I walk in the room, I'm tripping over everything because I can't see it because my nearsight. And so that's what, what Peter's talking about is you don't have certain qualities in you, you become so nearsightedly blind that you'll forget that you've been saved. And you'll go back to your to what you remember. You, 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 you reconnect with those former sins. And he says, that's not that's not for the for you. That's that's not for you. I need to remind you, that's not for you. Because see, there's some complications to our faith that comes about because of our inefficient or in, insufficient. Mm -hmm. There's some complications that come about it. Now, as I, as I read this, this verse, I, I, I saw the flip side of it. I, I, saw, I saw what he was saying from the initial. He says that the qualities that, that, that are in you that are increasing will keep you from being ineffective and being unfruitful. If you have these qualities, they'll keep you. But on the flip side, if you don't have these qualities, it won't keep you from being ineffective. You will be ineffective. If you don't have these qualities, you will be unfruitful. As a matter of fact, if you don't, have, if you lack these qualities, you are nearsighted and blind, and have to go back to your your, your sin. So you gotta have these qualities. In other words, but if you don't have these qualities, what happens? It complicates things. If anybody ever lived a complicated life where you just can't seem to get things in order, and no matter how hard you try, it's almost like running uphill in the wind. Is that the, the, the harder you press and, and, and try to move forward, something keeps pushing you back. Well, 
that that's because at, at one time you, you started kind of drift drifting off the truth and you said, well, maybe this might work, maybe that might work. And, and after a while you start doing that so much times you do forget that the truth over here really works. God really works. I, I, I know back in the day, especially in the beginning of my walk with Christ, I would I always think that God didn't, wouldn't respond soon enough. So I'd give him a little time. But then if he didn't show up in time, then I would go ahead and do it. And then once it messed up, I'm like, Lord, please fix it. You know, but if I waited just a little bit longer, I would have got what I was looking for. And that's what, what we're talking about here. Because one thing that happens is that, that if, if, if you don't have that, those qualities in your faith, it will complicate, complicate your potential. You're, you're, you'll be living by the I can lie. Mm -hmm. Knowing the scripture is, if you were to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, what you do is you stop shy, you say, I can. Mm -hmm. And you go out and you try to do it, but you realize that you can't. And so you begin to live this lie, not realizing that it's Christ's all things strength that will help you get through, mm -hmm. that will help you accomplish the things of, of life. Because Without that, without those qualities, it's not available to you. It's sitting at the door, but it's, you, you can't reach it. It, it, it also complicates your authenticity. If you, you live by the I am life. I, 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 or, or you're going to go back to church one day? I, I am. I, I plan on <laughs> Are you, you going to read your Bible someday? I, I am. I, I plan on it. And, and it's a lie because you ain't going to go back to church. You're not going to read the Bible because the more you live under your, your who you think you are, your authentication, then you get further and further away from who God had called you. Mm -hmm. Because when when I when I look at it, if it were, with Romans eight and thirty seven, it says that there's a conquering love that God Christ has for you. So I'm, I'm able to do all. I, I'm I'm more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. So as I'm going through life and I'm living out this life, I'm able to overcome the challenges that that I'm faced with. And so, so, so with that, that, those qualities in me, I can do it. I can do it. I am able to do it. I am able to stand. I am able to, to go into this promised land. I don't care how big those giants are. I am it. I be able to do it. See, when you, when you don't have those, 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 those qualities that is needed and, 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 and your faith is inefficient or in, insufficient, it complicates your destiny. It complicates your, your destiny. You you end up living by the I will line. I, I'm or I'm going. Like that, my, my, my wife used to talk about the, the, the I'm going. You know, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that someday. I'm going to go here one day. I'm going. You, you know, and you ain't gonna do nothing because you're that that part of your life is complicated by the form of sins that you that you're in. You, you're you're not able to get get stable any longer. And so Christ's influential work will not be done by you. You, you want, because that, that greater works that he has over in, in John 4, 12 that he talks about, you won't be able to do those things. Now, now I'm just reminding you, you, you know, for those of you that, 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 that have, the, uh, are standing now currently in this present truth, but if you don't have certain things, if you don't have this, if this, this understanding of who Christ is, you won't be able to do anything that he has called you to do. Mm -hmm. Just like those, those greater works that, that, that he has spoken of. Because overall, without the knowledge of Christ, the, the point I'm trying to make with you in this one piece is I'm looking at the flip side of what that scripture is saying, is that we're limited in what we can do for God if we don't have those things. Yes. Over in 2 Peter uh, 2.20, go, go there right, we're going to, or rather 2 Timothy 2.20, I want to show you something. Else. Show you what Paul was, was telling, telling Timothy concerning Second Timothy 2.20. As a matter of fact, let's, let's start at, at, at verse 19. He says, Never, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, standeth true. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are here, and that everyone that nameth the name of, of, of Christ depart from iniquity. Then everybody that has a knowledge of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there is no not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 29, I'll, I'll end there. It says, If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. And so, so just 
Paul stands in agreement with Peter when he says, if you are missing certain qualities, then God cannot use you for the honorable things that he has set, set up for you to do. In other words, that's, and, and, and so those are the complicating things that, that happen when, when, when you don't have this, this, this truth in you, when you don't have this, this understanding of, of who Christ is in you. But there is a result that you do get, however, that is a positive result from that abounding faith in the knowledge of Christ. Because what happens when you have had those things, then what, it, what happens is that you have a purposeful life. Over in, in, in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, it, it puts it this way, that you'll have a life that goes beyond the limits of our past. It, it, it talks about a life that causes you to press on to the mark of the high call, which is the most valuable prize. And that mark of that high call is that you press on to the knowledge of Christ. You don't you no longer allow your past to hold you back. You just keep on moving forward. Baby. You just, just just keep on moving forward. And the further you move for, forward, the farther you get from your past to a certain point that you can no longer hear or see your past. But if you don't press on, if you just stand still, you will always hear that, that, that call of the past and come on back to where you belong. You know, I don't belong there anymore, I say. And I'll continue to move forward. And so I have a, the result of, of, of having these things. I've got a purposeful life. I know the truth of my life. I know why, why I was born, regardless of where I was born, regardless if I was born in a, in, in a pauper's house or in a palace. I know why God had, had called me yes. out of all those other little, 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 little um, cells that were going down at the, the love count. He called my name. He said, Robert, come forth. And I came forth. And, and, and his life began to progress for me. The older I got, the closer, the, 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 the more I could hear that call that he was calling to me that pulled me out of that sorry past that I had. Mm-hmm. When, you have, when you understand that, 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 that the knowledge of Christ, you understand who Christ really is, mm-hmm. and the truth of that knowledge, then it results in your prayers being asked. You, I, I, I stand on the belief that when Jesus had prayed when he was out there at, at the tomb of Lazarus, and, and he said, Lord, I, I, I do this. I, I, I'm just doing this for the sake of the people around. But see, I know you hear my prayer. Mm-hmm. And so I would just do this just so that they know that you are the one and true God. Mm-hmm. Lazarus, come forth. See, before Jesus had even got there, he had prayed to God to, to resurrect Lazarus. Mm-hmm. He couldn't do it of himself. He couldn't do it of, of himself. He had that ability, but he relied on the power of God because he was, he, was, he was doing God's work here on earth. And so this particular situation was to glorify God, not him. Right. And so he said, Lord, I know you hear my prayer every time. And so I know that when I pray to God, because I believe in the knowledge of Christ, that because He's Christ is my intercessor there in heaven, God hears my prayer. God hears my prayer. Yes. And so the prayers that we, that because of, and then what it says over there in Matthew 15 and 7, really makes it understandable. Because it talks about being, being a, a rather uh, John, uh, 15 and 7. It, it, it talks about the, what happens when you abide in Christ. And so when, when Christ is abiding in me, the meaning that, that, that he's living in me and I'm living in Christ, then the words that I speak of Christ, that they will be answered by God. Amen? Amen. And then lastly, there, there's a result that, that happens when you have this precise revelation of God. You have, because when you have this knowledge of Christ and this, this revelation comes through and it's so exact and so accurate. Wow. And, I mean, it'll it, it just blow your mind because when you, when you see it, you know, it comes in details and specifications. Mm-hmm. A lot of visions that you get, you know, uh, is of the end state and it shows you in, in, in living color exactly what God has called you to do. And along the way, he gives you bits and pieces and say, yeah, that's, that. you're going in the right direction. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. And, and, and it may not seem like it, but if I just keep moving moving on, things start, start you know, showing up and I start connecting dots. Like, oh, that's why I was doing it that way. That's why I wouldn't talk to a certain person. That's why I did this, this certain thing, because I have the knowledge of Christ. But if I got the knowledge of Buddha, I don't know, because he can't talk. <laughs> he can't tell me those things. See, so we get a Holy Spirit that comes, on, comes, on, you know, comes near us, and he tells you the direction that you're going. That's revelation. I mean, go, yeah, go that way. That don't look like the right way. Just go that way and don't worry about it. You go that way, sure enough, it works out. Mm-hmm. And so with, with, with all of these things, what, what happens is that when we possess this, this, this enhanced knowledge of Christ, I wrote down here, when we possess this spiritually enhanced quality mm-hmm. of the knowledge of Christ, we have this knowledge 
that increases the awareness of and the ability to learn what needs to be known. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, there's a lot of truths out there. Truly, there are a lot of truths out there, but not all of them are, are, are needful for you to know. There's a lot of things in the Bible that you read. I was reading this one commentary, and you were saying that there's a lot of things in the Bible that brings up certain questions that is not fully spelled out in the Bible, but at the point in time, it's not really for you to know. Over time, God will begin to reveal those things that pertains to what it is that he wants you to do. Yeah. And so people read that, and they're like, well, the Bible ain't true, because it didn't tell me why the ground was dry when, when, the, when the Red Sea had, had parted. <laughs> you didn't need to know that. <laughs> Just know that God did it. You don't even know how he did it, because because you might try to duplicate that, and all of a sudden now you say, well, I'll eat God. I can do it myself. You, 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 you see, so there's certain truths. That, that need not be known, but if I if I if I possess that spiritually enhanced quality of, of truth, the one that, that comes from Jesus through the Holy Spirit, I got all I need. Amen. And it's going to show me everything that I need to know. Yes. It's going to show me how to live a better life. It's going to show me how to how to have my prayers answered, how to how to, how to righteously pray. Do I need to go into a, a long drawn out prayer? Do I just need to say, Lord, help me? You, you know. Whatever the case may be, and it, and it also helps us live and like, walk a better Christian walk. Yes. That's, that's that's the truth. That's that's really the truth of it all. The second point I wanted, wanted to, to, to what Peter wanted to make, he says that we must maintain our spiritual equilibrium as a result of our confirmation of our our divine calling and our election. Mm -hmm. We were able to maintain a balance once we understand the reason of our calling. And why the reason of our election? Mm -hmm. The Bible says in, in 2 Peter 1 10, it says, We have obtained a faith that is precious and equal in the standing with Peter. It, it, it talks about that. And, and a call to seriously authenticate our divine selection and election. So, this, this is a, a and this, this uh, selection and election is a lifestyle actually that you live that is spiritually balanced. And possess qualities that makes one stable and not easy to fall. The Bible puts it, 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 it reads this way in, in, in the New Living Translation. It says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more to confirm your calling and election. For it is your, uh, if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. He said, Be more sure to practice these qualities, and if you practice them, you will not fall. You will not fall. Amen. In, in the uh, King James Version, it, it says there, Wherefore, uh, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. He says, Give diligence. That diligence that he, that he speaks of, is, if you go over there to verse 5, it says, And besides this, giving all diligence. Add to your faith, virtue, virtual knowledge, and so on and so forth. Now, the first diligence he's saying is like, look, you, you need to put some effort. Make sure that you do this. Make sure that you do this. The second time he does it, he says, look, make sure that you do this. He puts some effort, e extra emphasis on you making sure of your election and your and, and your calling. He wants you to be sure of that. On the other, he says, I want you to add these things. But I want you to be sure. I want you to be sure beyond a, a shadow of a doubt that you've been why you've been called and why you've been elected. I need you to know that. You can see when 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 I when I look at it from the, the standpoint of of not having a knowledge or understanding of my uh, calling or my or my election, what happens is I, I live an imbalanced life. If I don't don't understand why I got, you know understand what this calling is, you know what what you know, what what do they mean by that? You know, what is what is God trying to do? Why is why, why he's picking on me? In other words, if I don't have an understanding of that, then I'm I'm able to. There, there's flaws, there's character flaws that come out because I'm not living up to who I really am calling me. That there's, there's certain certain character flaws that come about and cause you to fall into trouble, and difficult. Why is my life so hard? Everybody else, is, you know, they they're, they're doing something that it don't seem as, as hard, and I try to do it, and I can't seem to do it. That this, you know, this, this person goes over here, they go to the club, they go to the church, but they got a car, they got a house and all that. And I'm going to church, and I'm reading the Bible, and it doesn't seem like it's, it's coming fast enough. I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. 
if certain character flaws that come about and all of a sudden you fall into trouble and sorrow, you have all, all these heartaches and all these heartbreaks. You, you end up, uh, in, in one instance, if you want a relationship, for instance, come about heartaches and heartbreak. And you hook up with the wrong kind of person. And that person, you, you started out with the call, but then they don't go to church, so you don't go to church, and they don't go to church. And, and they like to watch certain movies and read certain books, and so you stop reading the, the Bible or watching certain shows, and you start doing what they're doing, and you're moving yourself off of that call, mm -hmm. ever slowly but surely, and falling more and more into despair. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it, which is the third point, it causes despair and anguish. It's almost like what I, what I read over there in, in, in Psalms 116 and 3. Uh, go, go there right quick. I, I, I love how David puts it over there. <laughs> Psalms 113 and 3. I read 116 and 3. He, he says there, the sorrows of death encompass me, and the pains of hell God uphold me, and I found trouble and sorrow. Uh, that, that reference there is, is saying that, uh, that there's something that's, that's happened to me spiritually that's allowed all these things to come upon me, and I, and I, and I, I can't seem to find my way out of it. And so when you, when you don't understand your, 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 your divine call and your divine election, you put yourself in, in a position so that trouble and sorrow can come have their way with you. But when you live in a spiritually balanced life, then you live a life that, that confirms your divine invitation. You, you live out what it is that that invitation calls for. Over there in, in 1 Corinthians 1 uh, and 26, it, it talks about the divine invitation that we have. And we realize this one thing when we, when we read that, that verse. That God didn't call us because we were the wisest. He didn't call us because we were the mightiest. He didn't call us because we were the most noble. He didn't call, you know. And, and so if you think that that is the case, you think and try to operate outside of that, that calling and try to, I, I need to know more. I need to be, you know, be stronger in, in, in my walk. I need to be this. I need to be that. God, I didn't call you to do all that. I, I didn't want you to be the wisest in the crowd. I didn't want you to be the strongest in the crowd. I wanted, I wanted you to be the humblest so I can show them that I can I use humility. I, I lift up humility, but I'm not down pride. I'm not down pride. So, so he, he, he chose them because he wanted to confine, confound those wise and those strong. That's, that's the reason why he, he called us in. He said, look, come on out of, out of drugs. I want to show them that you can break this, this, this spirit of drugs. Come, 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 out of, come out of prison. I want to show you that you can walk out of prison and none of that stuff can, can harm you. Come, come out of depression. I want to, I want to, sh I want to show the people who, who, are, who are caught in depression how to get out of it. But I want to use your life to do that. I want, I want to use your, your, your answer to the call. I mean, I, I, I don't know when it was or, 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 or how it was, but I know it was. I just know it. At one time, I, I just got to the point, I'm like, Lord, I can't do this. No, no, I cannot go any further without you in my life. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I answered the call. And, and he said, okay, Robert, now I can use you. Mm -hmm. Now I can use you. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was no, I, I, I take that back, I do remember. I do remember Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that back. It happened up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And for a long time, I could not talk about it without crying. But I remember, and one of these days I'll tell you the, the full story, but I remember the Holy Spirit showing me what Christ went through for my sin. And once I realized that, I knew then that I had to be broken. I had to, 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 to release all the anger and all the sadness and all the disappointments so that now God can use me. And all this time, I thought I was a sergeant first class in the United States Army. Nobody could tell me what to do, why to do, or how to do. But he broke that. He broke that. I thank God he broke it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thank God he broke it. So that now I can live up to the call that he has on my life. And so there's a spiritual prospect that, that, that comes about when you confirm your divine invitation, your divine call. And there's a spiritual perspective that comes about when you understand your selection, why you were chosen. Okay, open Romans 9, uh, 10, 13, it, it, the, the definition of, 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 of uh, election there is the decree made by choice by which God determined to bless certain persons through Christ, get this, 
by the grace of God. That that election, that select that, that election that he that he had, that, that divine election, had nothing to do with what you did. It had all to do with Christ Jesus. And based on that, he, he said, Yeah, you're the one. You accepted my son. Come on in. You can come on in. Just like that that the definition of, of, of the invitation, the divine invitation is to embrace the, the salvation of God. In this case, it's to embrace that, 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 that what Christ the Savior had done to, to, to grab a hold of that and say, yes, I understand that. I believe that. I didn't have to work my way up here. You you worked your way up on the cross. You stayed up on the cross for my sin. And all I had to do is accept that that what you've done on that cross. And I'm in. That's all it takes. It doesn't take anything else. That's the truth. But the lie would tell you, no, nah, you need to start doing a whole bunch of work. you got a whole lot of stuff that you got to pay for. And stuff that you never had enough money to pay for in the first place. That they put a dollar to it, you know what I'm saying? And so we were selected before we had a chance really to learn what was good and evil. We was already elected. God had already seen in his son who he was going to elect. Who he, who he was going to elect. And so just like like uh, you know, the example I like to use is what with, with Jacob and Esau. And over there in, in, in that Genesis book, it says that as it was written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I hate. In other words, Jacob I accepted as the one that's going to carry the seed on for the coming Christ, not Esau. I wasn't going to use Esau. And so, so in, in your life, you were selected and, and elected for a particular purpose. You were chosen for that. When, when one looks at, at their balance, at the sense of balance, because when you look at the, the, the divine call and the and divine election, it's a balance. And what stands in between the balance is God. It's Christ, right? He stands in the balance, and he, he, he puts the weight of, uh, of your election and your, your call, and that's when you have your balance, spiritual balance, just like your natural balance. See, in your natural balance, it's, it's, it's your balance that keeps you from falling over when you stand up and walk. That's what that keeps you, keeps you squared away. And, and the elements of that really... Or, or your, your your visual system, your, your eyes and your ears. There, there, there's, there's a little mechanism in your ear that keeps you balanced. And it's your understanding of your place in space. When you have all three of those things working, you've got good balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you close your eyes and you close your ears, you kind of get that, that, that wavering feel. You know, but when you have it, when you, when you have your eyes open and your ears open, and you understand where you are, then you're, you're balanced. And so the thing about balance is, is it's not natural, really. It's, it's something that we have to work on. Why do I say that? A baby don't know how to keep their balance when they're born. They'll fall right over. And as you get older, you tend to lose your balance. That's why people, older people fall down. So, but you don't have to fall. You can, you can maintain your balance. You can, you can do things to, to, to help maintain that balance throughout. So the same way in, in, in your Christian walk, is that with the, with the Word of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit, that helps you keep your balance. And so as you keep your balance, you do not have to fall. You never have to fall. That's the truth. You never have to fall. You never have to fall in sin as long as I keep the Word on one end and the Holy Spirit, my understanding of the Holy Spirit on the other end, right in between Christ. And I keep my balance. I got my balance right there. Amen. I got my balance right here. Amen. 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 Maybe that's why the cross is like this. To show the balance, to strike the balance. And so you'll never have to fall. Amen. And so so with that understanding of, 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 of your call and of having a, the understanding of the knowledge of Christ, when you have those truths in place. Thirdly, and the last point I want to make is that we are given our spiritual access as a result of the ministry of divine entry. Yes. yes. It says here, the Bible says in, 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 in Peter uh, 1 11, I think it's uh, yeah, first, uh, Second Peter verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 11. It says, The doorway into heaven is beyond imaginable thought and mm -hmm. comprehensible word. That, that's, that's, that's my interpretation of it. it says, see, so the believer. It has to keep certain things, certain necessary things, so that the way stays open for them. Amen? Amen. It says it this way, yeah, in verse 11. It says, For in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance 
into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you, when you have these things, in other words, it says, for in this way. So, so having the truth of the knowledge of Christ and having, a, having a, a, a surety of your divine calling and your election, having these understandings of these truths, that, that, that when I have these, then there's a, there's, there's a way that's richly provided for me. So if you don't have the truth of Christ in your mind, if you don't understand your, your calling, to you, this way is not all that rich. It, it, it really doesn't matter. Because you don't know for sure you're gonna make it or not. You know, I, I don't know if I if I if I decided to to, to uh, I, I was reading this this uh, bumper sticker the other day and it, and it said that the people that decided that they're gonna wait till the eleventh hour to accept Christ they died at eleven at ten thirty. They won't wait till eleven o'clock, but they died too soon. And, and so so if you don't know for sure. You can't say, okay, I'm, I'm going to live out my life, and right before I die, I'm going to accept Christ and I've, I've had my way in. No, you can't do that. You have to, there, there's, there's an assurance along the way that tells you, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to make it in. I, I know I'm going to get in. I know that there's a way. I know that Christ has set up eternal life for me. I know it's there. I believe that it's there. But I'm not going to rely on that knowledge. There's some things that I'm going to do along the way. I'm going to keep holding on to this truth. I'm not going to allow false teachers to come in. I'm not going to allow certain situations to knock me off of that truth. I'm going to hold on to that truth. And so for me, that way is richer yeah. and, 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 and more marvelous than any other way that they talk about. Now all these other truths that they say, well, yeah, you, you don't have to go that way. You can go this way. Well, that door is, is you know, that, that ain't the right door for me to go, go in because that, that door leads down. I want the door that leads up. I want to go up. Amen. Yeah. And so yeah. And, and so when, when, I, when I looked at this, when I was, the understanding I got, I had to use Jacob as, a, as an example. Mm -hmm. And over there in Genesis 28 and 17, when Jacob saw that and he was in a certain place, and he noticed this, this thing, he called it the gates of heaven mm -hmm. that leads up to the house of God. And to him, he was, it, it, he was awestruck when he seen it. He's like, oh my goodness. I didn't even know that I was standing at the very gate that led up to the house of God. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. So if you don't have that truth, you'll be standing right by it and won't even know it. Mm -hmm. But when you have the truth, you'll be standing by it and you know it. Yeah, that's the way to go there. Right down the way, I can see it. I can see it. So I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing in, in, in the name of Jesus. Amen? See, he was he was looking at something he couldn't, couldn't fully describe. Even John the Revelator gave his, his really his best description of it over there in, in, in Revelations 21 and 12 and, and, and verse 21 also it says and then he said when, when he seen it he saw this high wall and he saw these angels standing on top of the wall of, of each or rather standing on top of each gate mm -hmm. and, the, and the most amazing sight about these gates he said that each gate was made by one pearl mm -hmm. and, and so so as he's sitting up there looking at it, let me, let me put it in perspective about this this this, this richly this rich interest that, that we have as I, as I move toward toward my closing here. See, I did some research about doors and pearls, you know, understanding what what, what Jacob and, and John was looking at. And the most expensive door I found out in the world was made by a company company in Bucharest, uh, Romania. And this door is, is, is the company name is Penham Doors. And this door is a diamond studded door. And this door is valued at thirty-four thousand dollars. They said that's the most most expensive door in the world. Now, if that door is that expensive, you can only imagine what the house looked like. You ain't gonna have it on no no, no shotgun, you know, you know, the diamond studded door on a shotgun house. You're gonna have a diamond studded door. On a house that I mean, it's just massive. It's just, it's just, massive. It's just I don't know. I mean, I bet the house was made of gold. I mean, it was just, just so big to have a thirty-four thousand dollar door on, on, on that. Okay, so 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 the door like the gate, in other words. And the largest pearl in the world is nine and a half inches round. Okay, about that big. A pearl. And we know pearls are, are made by clams. So you only can imagine what this clam looks like <laughs> that produced 
this nine inch uh, uh, pearl. Now this nine inch pearl weighs 14 pounds. Nine inches, 14 pounds. It was valued at $42 million. That means that one inch was worth $4.9 million. Now that's a pearl. Nine inches in diameter. And then I got a door, a regular eight foot door, maybe it was a 10 foot. But it's worth $34,000. There's no way when we look at the scripture, what it just said here, that, that for in this way there will be provided, richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's no way that I can use my, 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 my finite mind, my, my little itty bitty pea brain mind to sit there and understand what this richly provided doorway or gateway into heaven is like. If I don't have the knowledge of Christ. But if I have the knowledge of Christ and I really think about it, this way is so marvelous. This way is so spectacular. This way is so wonderful that there's no way that I will go to another truth that's going to take me from such an entrance. And so, so when I when I look at it from the standpoint is that our entryway into our heavenly home is that it's, it's so grand that 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 is that is, is so wonderful that it was only given through the death of Christ. That was the only way that we were able to enter into heaven now. And that is, is worth more than anything that man can produce. That's, right. That's worth more than any man can produce. And I didn't even try to put the math to it, but I'm thinking what kind of clam had to be living to, in order to make a gate large enough for people to come walking through? And not just one of them, 12 of them. Because he said it was a high wall. Mm -hmm. So that meant the gate had to be just as high, just as wide. So you can only imagine what, what, what the riches of glory that, that stand for us in, in, in heaven. That's the truth. And so when you look at the, the word of God you know, through the truth of Christ, then you start taking on a whole new objectiveness and a whole new subjectiveness when it comes to your Christian life. Amen. And that's the truth. That's the truth. And I just need you today to remind you of that. I, I, and I want to close with this. I want, I want you to understand that when, when Jacob was about to walk across that, that, that river, when he, was, when, when he, when he came from, from, from Laban's house, mm -hmm. that's like when you came out of sin. You know? mm -hmm. when, you, when you're living the lie. You know how, how, how Laban lied to Jacob all those years yeah. about, okay, mm -hmm. you can do this and I'll give you that. You do this and I'll give you that. Well, that's what the devil does. He said, you do this and I give you that. You do this. And then you put, well, well, give me what you owe me. I don't owe you nothing. You did it because you wanted to. That's on you, not on me. And so you end up living a lie. But then one day Jacob's like, man, I can't live this lie no more. I got to get out of it. And so one day he was standing at the river's edge, between, which was in the middle between his past and his destiny. And as he was standing there, this is what he said over in Genesis 32.10. He says, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth that thou hast showed unto thy servant. See, in order to accept the truth of Christ, you have to humble yourself. Yes, yes. You have to come to a point of humility yes. and, and, and putting yourself down. Because Jacob, being the supplanter, being the trickster, all the while, now he decided, hey, I need to give, I need to stop that. I need to give all that, give that life up for a better life. He yeah. says, so he said, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not worthy of the least of all those mercies. Yeah. I, I'm not worthy of that. Think about it, y'all. We're not worthy of the least of all the mercies. Mm -hmm. And, and he goes on, he says, I'm, and I'm not worthy of the least of, the least of all the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth, in, in, uh, when, when you look it up in, in Genesis, the, the, the Hebrew definition is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness is, is God's truth. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, even, I'm not even worthy of that, the least of. Mm -hmm. I'm not. That you have shown. You weren't worthy of all that, but he still showed it to you. Mm -hmm. 
You wasn't worthy of, of, of life, but he kept you alive. He didn't, he didn't kill you. You wasn't worthy of, of, of gaining access to the things of, of, of Christ, but yet when you accepted Jesus Christ, he said, that's my grace. You can go ahead and take that. You can go ahead and have that. And so here he is standing between his past and his destiny. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy, but if you will, but if you will give it to me, I'll, I'll, I'll continue moving forward. I'll continue living a life of truth. David put it this way. He, he said over in Psalms 25, 5, he says, Lead me in thy truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee I will wait all the day. And so in other words, David was saying, Teach me your truth. So we need to be taught to the truth of Christ. And that's why it's important to sit under a word of truth. A, a, a word that, and when I say a word of truth, that you understand that when I, when I go to the word and I start studying it, and I sit down and I listen to what this pastor said or this teacher or whatever that's standing in the pulpit at the time, it matches my truth. And then if that's the case, I'm, I'm with you right there. Because it, it's not to say that even today that what I'm saying will match everything about your truth, but I'm just bringing it up to your memory. I want to remind you of a few things that you might have forgotten. And so we say, Lord, teach me your truth. We say also, he said, lead me in your truth. He said that over in, in Psalms 43.3. He said, oh, send out thy light and thy truth, and let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He said, lead me with your truth. Mm -hmm. See, before, hmm, we were following the light. Mm -hmm. Before, we were, we were falling behind all the people we thought knew what they were doing, where they were going, and they come to a dead end, and we're like, okay, now what? You got to turn around and go the other way. Okay, we're going around like this way. Now, now what? Because they don't know where the door is. You know what I'm saying? But, but here, there's a light that comes forth with the truth. Yes. Revelation. Yes. Lead me with your revelation mm -hmm. of your truth. Lead me. Hmm. Lead me and bring me to your holy hill. Yes. I, I want to go where you are. Yes. I want to hang out with you. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of laying down in the, in the valley with these lions. Put me on, on the mountaintop of the truth. And, and, and take me to your tabernacle. Take me to the place where you live. Mm -hmm. Take me to the place where you are. Mm -hmm. Because when I was in the club, it was it was dark and dank and death it was all around me in that, in that place. Mm -hmm. When when I was out there in the streets, it was nothing. I, I mean, I, you know, I'm ducking every time I hear you know some pop. I'm you know trying to trying to figure out how to get out of it. You, you know. And and and, and it, I've been in places where people are like, what are you doing? I don't know, but I'm getting up out of here, that's for sure, right? <laughs> and so I want him to lead me with his truth. Take me, take me where you want me to go, Lord. Show me what you want to show me. Help me do the things that you want me to do. I know I can't do them on myself. And while you're at it, protect me with that truth. Because you're lying. The thing about it, that, that, I'm not a good liar. I think my mother put something on me when I was a kid because my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I want to tell the story, we call it a story, you know, but you know it's a lot. My lips start quivering. Qu 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 and people know I'm going to tell a lot. I'm like, oh my God, I got to talk about this. <laughs> and my memory is very short. And so if I tell a lie, two minutes later, I forgot what I just said. What did you just say? I don't know what I mean. Just like writing the lines back. <laughs> now, I'm just talking about me right now, but if you ever tell what the pastor was talking about, put your name in. <laughs> put your name in. He told them to say, yeah, this is what I used to do. But now I'm protected by the truth. Now I'm following the truth. He says over there in, in Psalms 91 and 4, he says, you shall cover me with your, your feathers, and under your wings shall I trust the truth, and your, and your truth shall be my shield and buck. That, that truth is going to protect me. So I don't have to lie. See, the only reason that you lie is because you're, you're afraid of losing something or you're tempted to gain something. So, so you lie. And that, that's that's you know, just, just the natural uh, things about lying. But if I'm protected by the truth, I'm not worried about losing anything. I'm not worried about trying to gain things. I got all things through Christ who strengthened. I, you know, I, I have access to, to all the riches and glory. I have all these things. So I ain't got a lot. I'll tell you the truth. So if you don't want to know the truth, don't talk to me. Because you're going to hear the truth. You're going to hear the truth. Amen? Amen. But ultimately, out of all this, what, what I believe is 
is, is really the word, is that over in, in, in John uh, 1 and 14 and 17, it talks about Jesus. Yeah. That's the truth. That's the precious truth that we have. That's the truth. Because if, if to me, it's, if, and, I, and I know it is to you as a believer, that's all the truth we ever need. Mm -hmm. I don't need any other truth. Just give me Jesus. Mm -hmm. give, give me him. I, that's all I need. Because over there it says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. So we, we, with, with, with Jesus, I have all of who God is which is the fullness of grace and truth. In verse 17 it says that the law was given by Moses. The law that tells me that I'm a liar was given by Moses. The law that tells me that I'm a murderer was given by Moses. The law that, 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 that told me I shouldn't covenant, that was given by Moses. The lifestyle of a liar. The, those, 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 excuse me, those commandments therein. That, that was given by, by Moses. To tell you that you're a liar. You're not living up to the, your, your divine cause. You're not living up to your election. So without God, you'll never get there. You can't get eternal life, in other words, through the law. You die by the law. But, 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 in the English language, but cuts everything else off. But, I like how you put it either, but grace and truth. Amen. But grace and truth. That came by Jesus. So all the grace that you ever need to live in life, and all the truth that you ever need to live in life comes by Jesus. It's yes. given to you by Jesus. That's the truth. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. I, I tell you what. Now that I got the truth, I'm telling you, there's, there's some things that I'm getting ready to do in the upcoming days that the things that I thought I couldn't do but knew, realized I can't do, now with the truth, I know I can come. I know that I can, I can be. Uh, uh, Take this ministry to a whole new level. I yes. know that there's going to be people who, who are going to join later on. They, they, they're coming because he showed it to me. That was the truth. So I'm not going to sit there and get all nervous about what, what ain't happening because it's happening. It, it's working out. It, it's working out. It, it's working out according to his purpose, according to, to who he's called. They, they, it's going to show up. There's going to be some things that each and every one of us is going to do as, as, as the days go by. As we live out this truth completely, that's going to change a whole lot of people's lives. When we start showing them not the truth that we know as, as far as our intellect, but the truth that we know by Jesus. When we start showing them that, man, there's going to be a big change. There's going to be so, so, many, so many testimonies that's going to come out of that. When people look at Divine Grace Christian Fellowship, they're like, wow. That's a ministry of long ministry. That's a, that, that's a, them people right there. They, they got the truth. They're operating out of the truth. And we're, we're not doing it just to get all those accolades and all that. We're doing it because we've been looking for the truth for so long. Amen. We've been looking for the truth for so long. Amen. And now we know it. Now we know it. And now we know it.